Hey guys, my name is Devin Adams. I'm a Fortinet instructor here in Tempe, Arizona for Dynamic Worldwide, and I record these videos for the people who have taken my class. And uh, the last class that I taught, I did have a request for this demonstration, so we're going to do it. Uh, so what are we going to be doing? Uh, in this video, we're going to be tracking admin changes, okay? So something to keep in mind. Uh, for starters, I'm using my impromptu lab environment, and we do have a Fortinet manager up here that is running in backup mode. So technically, speaking, I wouldn't have to do this because all my FortiGates are being managed um, by their individual admins, but because it's going to a backup ADOM, all the changes are, are automatically there. Okay, so, uh, but for those who do not have their Forda manager up and running or don't have one, uh, we can still accomplish the, the same thing. So essentially what's going to happen is that we're going to turn on a feature called auto backup when logging out. So when an admin logs in, okay, does changes, then logs out, there is a revision of the running configuration that is stamped, that is that is copied, okay? So that way, if someone needs to go back and see what someone has done, they can have a little bit more accountability of what's happened by comparing the diff files of those two. So uh, the log files do show you that changes were made and maybe even where in the FortiGate that they were changed, by whom, okay? Uh, but this will give us way more detail by actually seeing those changes uh, side by side. So um, yeah, so that's going to be our goal. So we're going to first turn on that feature, and then we need to get multiple users connecting to this New York branch office. Okay, I thought I'd just take the opportunity and pick on a FortiGate here that uh, hasn't really been touched. And uh, we're going to point that LDAP server down the VPN tunnel. All right. And then after that, we're going to make some changes by logging in like a 40 duck or Bob and then uh, tracking those changes using our diff files. So uh, anyways, uh, let's just go ahead and, and do it. So uh, the very first thing we got to do is turn on those automatic backups on logging out. So I'm going to get to my command line here from my, nope, that's not it from my New York, there it is, my New York uh, FortiGate, all right? And then I'm just going to do a config system global, and the command is set revision backup on logout enable, and then I'll commit, okay? Now, it's only going to make a snapshot if changes were made when a user logs out, all right? So just keep that in mind if you have someone going in there and just taking a look around. Obviously, there's going to be nothing that, uh, you know, is going to get snapshot if, if they don't make changes. So, um, yeah, anyways. So, but let's now go ahead and set up that LDAP server so we can have multiple admins logging in instead of just us using our generic admin account. So, um, I'm just going to use my Windows PC here. So here we are. This is the New York office. I've already logged in. Uh, I'm just going to go down to my uh, users and devices. I'm going to say LDAP servers. All right. I'm going to say create new. And I'm going to say DC1. The Oops, it's 10.10.1.10, .10 I believe. All right. And we did already make the FortiGate a password here. I think we just called it FortiGate because we set that up in a different lesson. Hit test connectivity. Once it says successful, we know that the credentials were good. And this is what I meant by guys when I said earlier in, in earlier videos to give the FortiGate its own domain user so it can set the bind up here so you don't have to rely on an admin to do it. And I'm just going to come up here and actually point to the top of my my tree all right so but if i did have my domain controller split up into into uh sites you know you could point to just the specific site that it needs um but there we guys go so and then i'm just going to go ahead and test the credentials real quickly and see if i just can't if i just can't uh authenticate so all right just make sure it can reach that oh i must have fat fingered it Oh, it's still saying user credential errors. Okay, let me try. Uh, I thought that was my password. Let's see here. Oh, I'm still getting I'm still getting an error message. 
I have no idea why. Well, that's okay, because I always record my screw-ups anyways, so I'm going to go back here to my domain controller and just see exactly what my password is. I swear I just used it to get into the other FortiGate, though. So, here we go. And there are some debug commands that we can use also. All right. So, but there I am. I should be able to come in here and just, I don't know, reset my password. There we go. Okay. There we go. My password has been changed. All right. Now let's go back to our one here. Wow, I have no idea why it's giving me an error message. So the only other thing that I can think about is uh, maybe it's saying that it was successful when reaching it for the first time, but we are using the SD-WAN, so I really do not know which VPN tunnel it's trying to access that from. Uh, and when it does, it doesn't have a IP address associated with it. It's just going to use whatever IP address um, uh that it's going to pick whatever tunnel to go out to so that didn't make much sense but let me just show you guys because if you guys remember we have vpn tunnels uh going to our sd wan right through the vpn but we also have one coming here to the data center and it can pick just pretty much any path that it wants to to try to get back here because of that sd wan so i'm just going to set a source ip address okay to make sure that it always comes um back to 10.10.3.254 instead of picking just whatever interface that it left from. So maybe it's having some problems with asymmetrical routing. So um, not a big deal. Let's just fix that. So let's go to our command prompt. And I'm a really big about recording my screw ups, guys. So um, because this is what's probably going to happen in real life, right? So let's do a config uh, user. And we have LDAP here. And we do a show. All right. And, uh, oh, did I not even commit the changes? That's probably why. <laughs> I'm still going to do it anyways. Here we go. Uh, show. There it is. Jeez, that was so weird. All right, here we go. Edit. DC1, and I'm going to set the source IP address to 10.10.3.254, just so it always uses the VPN tunnel and doesn't try to use some kind of weird, you know, other route. So here we go. Okay. And if that doesn't work, I can always try to write a, uh, what you call it? I can always try to write a, um, I, um, help me out here, guys. An SD WAN rule. So, but I don't think that should be necessary. It's not like our radius server, which was out there on the uh, internet facing parts. So, all right, here we go. Let me try that again. All right, there we go. So, it made its way through. So, let's go ahead and uh, make our admins group. So, we did the LDAP bind. I probably just had to commit the changes. I probably didn't even have to set the source IP address. But you know what? It's still best practice, anyway. So, we'll roll with it. Okay. Um, so after that, let's go ahead and uh, go to users groups. All right. And we'll just say 40 admins. Okay. So uh, 40 admins. There we are. And we're going to say anyone that's a part of. All right. Anyone that's a part of. Level one, two, three. I'm not going to do tier support. I'm just going to give everyone super user access just as a demo. But normally, you know, that would be tiered. There we go. All right. And then we have to go to our system and go to administrators. And we're doing this just so we can have multiple admins logging into this box, guys. So uh, we're going to say match all users in a remote group. Which profile? Super admin. Which remote group? 40 admins. Okay. We'll just call these 40 admins. And now I should be able to log out and log in as Devin. So here we go. And I did. There we go. So um, now that we have accounts that are tied to people's names, okay, that whole accountability thing, 
All right, if I go ahead and I make a change here, like for example, I'll just do something very trivial. I'll just go to, um, I don't know, I'll just go to uh, the interfaces or something, and I'll call, and I'll call poor to, you know, Devin was here. <laughs> I had to do something to to get a change, okay? So now that I made a change, though, and I go to log out, all right, and then I come back in, all right, let's go see if it did take a snapshot of the configuration file because that was the whole goal, right, guys? So if we come over here, and we know it go to configuration, we go to revisions, all right? That was admin backing, admin, uh, that was admin leaving, and then here's 40 admins. Now it says 40 admins simply because uh, we had a single user group, right, for our wildcard admins, but I promise you that would be an easy matching up by just looking at the user log authentications over here but what's more importantly though is when we highlight these two and we hit the diff file you can see what has actually changed and there it is so whatever was in the green was the the difference so and it looks like uh the rehashing of all of our cert keys and things like that also gets recrunched out but for the most part we could scroll through here and have a full accountability of what i did the last time i was logged in which is changing that alias, all right? So, and then if I go ahead and I change that back, you should see another another config being done. So, all right, here we go. So I'm just gonna go back, take that out, all right? And we'll hit okay. And once I log out, it'll make another configuration save. So, and uh, just to kind of reiterate what I meant by the monitoring. So if we come over here to our, uh, not monitor, our login reports. And if we go into our user events, all right, uh, you should be able to see, it's either gonna be that or system events. We'll take a look here. It might be under system events. It's querying from the, from the 40 analyzer, by the way. Here we go. All right. See the Devon? See the Devon? Edit system, admin, 40 admins. Administrator Devon logged in successfully. All right, guys. So even though it says 40 admins on the... Uh, on the configuration save, all right? All you'd have to do is match up the timestamp to see which admin that really was, okay? So, um, or you could just make individual admin accounts. I mean, that's really what it comes down to, so. And uh, I have no idea why GNS3 does this whole like admin failed login from the loopback, guys. I still haven't figured that out yet. But what I meant by like system edit interface port two, if we open this up, it will give us the details of what might have changed, but I promise you, it's not the same level of um, granularity that you get by seeing an actual uh, diff file between the two configuration files. All right, because sometimes it might just say they made changes somewhere. And you're like, wait, where, you know? Um, anyways, but I know that was a really, really crappy video, but I promised I'd record it. So there you guys go. And uh, yeah, so, and that will probably be the last, look at all this cool SD-WAN stuff happening in real time. Anyways, um, this will probably be the last video that I record for a while. I just wanted to get it done before the weekend was out. And I hope who I made this video for, you found it helpful. So, all right, guys, until next time.